So it's been a year since releasing my 2022 solo moto camping setup. And since then I've embarked on over 20 different camping trips with different kinds of camping setups. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at my complete camping arsenal, along with some different luggage and tent options that I've used. Depending on where I go, for how long, and on which bike determines what I pack. So the aim of this video is to share the inside of the camping gear that I use to help make your moto camping life a little bit more enjoyable, more comfortable, a little bit more easier. Now first, to get us to our destination, usually some sort of navigation is the way to go. I use a quadlock wireless charging head paired with the vibration dampener to get my phone mounted securely to my bike so that I can easily navigate to each campsite. If you're already a quadlock user, then I highly suggest checking out their other accessories to get the most out of your quadlock case. Gone are the days of rustling through your bags, looking for your iPhone cable, finding your battery pack, and then having leads and stuff everywhere. This is their mag battery pack. You charge this up, there's a little button under here to tell you how much charge you actually have, and then boom and that automatically starts charging your battery up wirelessly. Now, if you don't like to carry around a bulky wallet on your rides, try the Quadlock Mag Wallet. This thing is awesome. Look how thin that is. It's so thin, you can store up to three cards. And then when you finish riding, you can just grab your phone, slap that on the back of your case, and it's always there. And also, if you feel like you wanna film yourself while you're out in your campsite, or if you do any little rides, they have their little Quadlock tripod. This thing is incredible as well. Just mount your phone up to the quad lock mount and bang, you can change angles, you can do anything. You can flip it around, you can capture your ride externally very easily as well. So this will take up no space in your camping bag whatsoever. Look at that. It's so small. So make sure you get the most out of your quad lock case with these awesome accessories that are available to you. And take 10% off with the link in the description below. Thank you so much quad lock for sponsoring this video. Luggage systems. So I started off with the USA dry packs. These are great. These are great if you're not doing too much camping. You might just go out on a few trips a year or if you're just starting out, you want something on a bit of a budget. USA dry packs. I think they're amazing. Completely waterproof, dustproof. It's gonna get you where you need to be. Easy to mount to your bike. They have a smaller size as well. So if you need that bit of extra storage, you can just clip a small one onto the top of this as well. Great bags, I love them. I do have the Overland bag by Lone Rider as well. This thing's even a bit more robust than the Usa Dry Pack. I've taken this out on a lot of camping trips and it, it can go on so many more. It is more expensive though, but you're paying for the, the quality. And this is their other dry bag that you can mount on top of the Overland bag as well. Same same material, same quality. They're both really, really good bags. Now for the T7, I do rock the Lone Rider Moto bags. Lone Rider sent these out to me as well. These are great. They've got the quick release system. So on the back, you can just quickly use a key, unlock it, flick that up, take it off your, your panty racks, and then go for a walk. They have dry bags inside of them. So you can assure that all your gear is gonna be really nice and dry and dust free. And they're high quality as well. Obviously, if you're doing a lot of trail riding, they're gonna just be useless. <laughs> you're gonna be flopping around everywhere, all the weights on the outside, which brings me to my next one. Oosh. So this is the Moscow Moto Reckless 80. They sent this out to me. I haven't had the chance to use it yet on a trip since having it, I injured myself. I haven't been able to go on a camping trip, but <laughs> it's ready to go. I'm so keen to, to try it out. Straps amazingly to the Scrambler. I haven't tried it yet on the T7, but I mean, like if it can fit on the Scrambler, it can fit on any bike. It's a very clever design. They're sending me out their smaller one, the Reckless 40, I think it is. So it's a much smaller design as well. It is strapped to your bike to hug your bike as well. So when you're doing trails and everything, it should be a lot more stable. If I'm doing a trip around Australia, this is the, this is what I'd take, but I don't have too much experience with it. I will release a video on all the bags and everything that I use in more detail. Now, before moving on with all the tent setups, I am gonna release a video soon, an in-depth video, because I have a few other tents to test out and they're pretty interesting as well and I reckon you guys will dig it. So I think I'm gonna have a dedicated episode and I'll go through everything in much more detail, but this, I'm just gonna give you just a basic idea on how these sort of work and how they fit to the bike and everything. I think last time I was just using this bad boy. This is the Lone Rider Moto Tent. It's probably the, it's the biggest out of them all. It's sort of, it's the same as the TP-ish. I love this thing. Um, I know it is big. It is, it's, it's definitely huge. Obviously it depends on what sort of camping you're doing. Depends what bike you're riding, where you're going. This I found is the best tent for winter. This could be better. I'll get onto that soon. But this is double laid. It comes with an optional awning that I like to use. If it's gonna be raining, this is such a great tent to be able to stand up around and just do about your stuff while it's raining, get changed. Yeah, you can park your bike in there as well if you want to. You don't have to. You can put all your all your luggage, have it all out, laying around so you can see what you got while it's pouring down rain and you're still fine. 
can cook in there, you can do, you can do heaps of stuff. This is the size that it packs down to though. So you want to make sure that you have a lot of space for that as well. A lot of you guys were asking where I mounted on the scrambler in my last video. I just mounted it to the penny rack. I just get some, some straps and then I just strap it to the side. It's not that cumbersome. It's, it's a penny rack. If you're going to carry a penny a bag, this is probably the same size and the same amount of weight that you'd carry anyway. On the T7, I put it on the back. I love this tent. This is one of my favorite tents. If I'm doing a trip around Australia, nah, I probably won't take it. I'll take something smaller, a bit more quicker to set up and pack down. The next one I want to talk about is a Lone Rider ADV tent. This is probably more suitable for your longer trips and everything, packs up and packs down quicker. But this is, yeah, good space. You've got a little net at the top, you can put your stuff in. You've got pockets in each corners. It's the ADV tent. And then moving on to this guy, so this is a TP. So obviously, it's not super practical or anything like that, but it's a bit of fun. You're in a teepee. It's, it's just something different. This fits fine on the back of the T7. I just strap it down. The really cool thing about this is that you can get an optional furnace that you stick inside of it. So you can have yourself a wicked little hot teepee, little hot tent. If you're in the middle of the snow or something, or if you're in winter, you could just have a little stove in there and you keep all nice and warm and cozy, which is something that I'd love to do. It's just trying to find out how I can rig up a furnace to the bike. You got a little chimney flue and everything like that. And camping in a teepee, that was nice. And it was raining as well. Full on waterproof, mosquito net and everything. Really cool if you want to just try something different. This one is a little two-man tent. It's called the Denali Kakadu. I don't think these will be for sale overseas. This is from an Australian camping store, but it's, it's pretty generic. It's just a two-person little hiking tent. Pretty light, packs down pretty small in a, its own little waterproof bag. Strap into your bike wherever you want to go. This Abel Brown tent is the smallest one that I own. This thing just packs into, into anything. You can put this in your backpack. It's very light, there's no poles. It's a very clever design. It attaches to the side of your bike. You get given a, a big old metal plate that's right down the bottom here. And that's what you put your, your kickstand on. So you can have the bike leaning towards you. I feel like it was it was safe. I felt safe. I didn't really question it sagging or tipping. You'd be able to set it up to the other, other side as well. There was a little bit of condensation in the morning though when I woke up. That's probably the only negative I can really say about it. There's enough space to put a gear beside you. Looks the part, very light, very small. But yeah, that's the Abel Brown tent. And then for tarps, I use the Alton Ultralight tarp. These guys are in Queensland. It's a very well-made tarp and they have a little book I think it's, it's in here. It's a little field guide and it shows you different different designs, how to tie some knots and everything. And this book's all waterproof and all that. Really well made. I like it. It looks it looks awesome. And I like that it's all green. So I've got a hammock set up by Outen that I'm keen to try out now that the weather's starting to warm up. I'm gonna give that a whirl. I've got a few other tents that are just pretty, pretty epic looking that I reckon you guys will get a kick out of. Now this is my camping chair and my table. They've both changed since last time. The camping chair is a lot smaller. This is from King Camp. It's not the high backrest one, so I've got no headrest or anything like that. This is still so fine and it packs down a lot smaller as well. And the tables change as well. It's a little bit smaller. I finally got myself an aluminium one. This is a Trekology one. They're cheap, they're from Amazon. Very easy to set up, to pack down. Just don't put too much weight on there, otherwise it does collapse. It's not the most sturdy, strong thing. It's just a cheap, aluminium table but it means that I can cook on it and I can just wipe everything down without the material getting all soggy like last one it's like that's how much space it takes up I think it's worth it in, like for me it's worth it being able to just sit down and just have a have a little table and just eat or just put your drink on there or cut some food just eat eating your food just normal stuff you know it is a luxury you don't need it but I do really like it when I'm going on my longer trips I probably won't take them with me though for going out more than you know a week at a time but for short one-nighters I'm just heading out just chilling out having a good time yeah I'll pack this for sure for sleeping so I'm still using the Exped air mattress this is very comfortable, awesome mattress. I love it, but it did start leaking on me. Yeah, it was full on winter. I remember hopping onto the air mattress and it was just almost completely deflated. It does come with glue and everything. I glued it up, worked a treat, was fine. Up until my most recent camping trip, it let go again and I fixed it. And then that night it just went down again. So I've got like multiple holes all happening around the seams and everything. I've used this since the very first episode, since the very first night. So I've had 27 nights sleeping on this, but I am now looking for something that's smaller than this for my longer adventures that's gonna be happening at the end of this year. So if you guys have any recommendations or anything that you think I should check out, let me know. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's been good. I've since upgraded to the Mountain Designs Travel Light 500. <laughs> I bought this. I was so sick of that massive winter one that I was carrying around all the time. This is so much smaller, packs down, packs down pretty nice, pretty nice and small. And it is 
fairly light as well. It's three season, so autumn, winter, and spring. It does get cold in winter though. So I ended up buying myself this guy. This is like a plus 10 or 15 degree liner. There was a morning when it was zero degrees at 9 a.m. So I'm assuming it would have been like maybe around minus three or minus four degrees Celsius during the night or even early morning when the sun just cracks. And I was cold. I felt my, my toes were going numb and it was, it was freezing. So any colder than that, either get yourself a really good liner or upgrade the, the sleeping bag to something a little bit more warmer. Other than that, I would just, I just use my regular liner and liners are just good. Stops your sleeping bag from getting all stinky and everything. Basically acts like a, a bed sheet. So then you just keep washing this over and over again and the sleeping bag stays relatively fresh. And then for summer, I use this guy. This is the Palmy. It packs down super small. It's very light as well. This is pretty odd though. I'll probably grab myself a, a new one, one of the later ones. This is a plus 10 degree sleeping bag. Um, summer only, that's, that's all I use it for. But yeah. That's the, that's the size difference there. And I'm still using that hiking chair pillow. I love this thing. I think it's such a good pillow. I have the best sleeps. I don't puff it up too hard. It's nice and soft. It doesn't move around. It's got the strap for underneath the mattress. So it just locks it in place. Love this thing. It's the best in my opinion, of course. For clothing, I bring along a compression sack. This one's from Lone Rider. They're pretty good. They've got like a, a mesh backing so that you, your clothes can breathe and they get, they get it all moist and damp and stuff. If you're really trying to save space, and I've done it before, just chuck your clothes in the bag just loose and just like wedge them in your bags anywhere you can. Fit them just to squish it all in there. I don't mind having a bit of a compression sack with me. Works really well. I still have my essentials bag. I don't know why I call it that, but it's just the bag and it's just got all a little bits and pieces in there. So I still use my LED lanterns, just put it out in the sun and it just gives you enough light. It's just a little bit of light, like a little globe. So you can still just look around without having your head torch on or anything like that. And they just sort of set a bit of atmosphere as well, which is nice. I use a head torch. This torch is pretty cool. This is the MSO3 13,000 lumen by Immolent. This thing, it's small, but damn, it is, it's so bright. <laughs> Just be careful because it can start fires. If I have the, the back end just completely disconnected, you can put a lock function on it as well so it won't turn on. No chance of that turning on inside the bag here. Take sunscreen, mozzie stuff, stuff them mozzies, toothbrush, deodorant, and I still use the other torch. This guy I showed it in my last vid. You can hook it anywhere, twist around, and you've got different outputs as well. And I also bring with me a set of earplugs just in case it's just one of those mornings. 5.30 in the morning, sun's starting to crack and the birds are going absolutely crazy. You wanna block that out. So a set of earplugs takes up no space at all. But in this bag, I also bring my battery packs and all that sort of stuff for all my all the camera gear and everything that I bring with me. So in last year's episode, I spoke about using the Firebox stove for all my cooking stuff. This is still a great piece of kit combined with the spirit burner and the spirit burner bottle, I feel like it's quite a lot of weight to carry around with you all the time. So I have since moved on to the 360 degree burner. And now this is quite an affordable piece of kit. I've seen a lot of other moto campers use exactly this setup. So you can buy all this for like 60 bucks Australian and everything sort of packs down nicely into their little containers here. Set up super easy, just screw it onto your little gas canister, start it up, away you go. Now for my gas canisters, I always just take these little guys, but then once you finish your camping trip, you're probably left with like half or a little bit less than half. And then to save you having to buy these little ones all the time, because they can be quite expensive just by themselves and to have multiple of them around, I bought myself this little tap thing. And so you buy yourself a big one and they're a lot cheaper and then you just screw that into there, screw this into here, open the tap up and then fill your little cans up. Great way to save your money and to save space and to save just hassle of having heaps of these lying around. I will link a video in the description on the process of doing this. There's a little bit involved and they're not expensive either. I just got this thing off Amazon and I've used it for literally every single one of my camping trips to fill this guy up. Super, super handy. And for my pan, I was using this one in last year's episode with the the whole clip on handle thing. It's good, it has really nice heat dissipation. It is just a, it's pretty heavy. So I've since upgraded to the Alpha Pan. It's a bit smaller. This is the eight inch one. Handle folds down, it's super light. It's so, it's so much lighter. Now the only downside with the 360 degree burner, if you're using this to cook up a steak or something like that, just take note that this is extremely hot and you get a nice hot spot right in the middle of your pan. And so whatever's there will most likely burn. So just have your, your heat just turned right down so you get a nice evenly balanced 
heat source on the, on the middle of your pan. The firebox stove, this thing cooks everything so nicely. You have that nice gentle flame and um, heats your pan up just like it was a normal fire and you cook your food much nicer. But it is doable with the 360 degree burner. Of course, it depends what you're taking. If you're just taking dehydrated food and stuff, you might just want to get yourself a jet boil. I've never used one, but <laughs> again, you can still just boil water and these guys with the 360 degree burner works a treat. If you feel like trying something different, making a little soup while you're on your trip, this works a treat. It's extremely light. It's quite large. It's two liters, almost two liters worth. So you can still pack heaps of gear in there so you're not wasting a whole bunch of space in your bag. And then cook yourself up a nice little soup or something. And then if I want to boil myself a coffee, I will just use this and then I'll use my coffee cup. And I mean like all this just all goes inside. You can just pack everything down all nicely and everything. Now, once again, I don't take everything at the same time. If I'm taking this, then this stays at home. I might not even use the pan if I'm just making a soup and some coffee in the next morning or something. I still use the cooking grill. I still can't find this exact same one that I use, but it is great. Works a treat. Packs down really nice and flat. I'll always use this when I'm cooking over a fire. Works awesome. Still use the same plates and bowl as last time. These things are working really well, so I'll keep on using them. The seat the Summit X plates. I think they're great. You can use the bottom side, the underside as a chopping board. You can see that I've used that a lot. Speaking of chopping, Civivi and Wee Knife sent me out these beautiful knives and they're, <laughs> you know, they're awesome. They cut stuff. I particularly love this one. I love the, I don't know, the flaky carbon fiber. Sounds really good as well. Very light too, which is which is nice. For cutlery, I'm still using my little green wrap thing. Holds everything in there all nicely. A pair of tongs, a pair of chopsticks, and these are the same brand, King Camp, as all the pots and everything as well. Still use the same sort of canisters as before. Just grab yourself some little watertight bottles and these little containers. So I have salt and pepper in some, or some chili flakes in the other, or some like Vegemite or butter or whatever. These things are super handy, really light. Um, you can find them camping stores, Amazon, whatever. Buy yourself a whole kit and then choose what you need as you go. Last year I had detergent in one and an oil in the other. And some of you were like, what the hell? <laughs> that one time that you're gonna put detergent on your food or whatever. So I ended up getting myself one of these things. That's the detergent right there. And this is like a wilderness wash. So this detergent you can use to wash yourself with for food, for everything. And it's 100% environmentally friendly. And it's got a little scrubbing brush. This is perfect. It's so small, it's super light. And now I'm not gonna accidentally pour detergent on my food. And I still use matches, but I have recently had a few times where it's rain, the matches get just wet. So I've always kept a ferro rod in with me. Ferro rods are awesome. No matter what, wind, rain, whatever, this is still, it's gonna just spark and you're gonna get a fire going. And of course, a little tea towel, wipe all your stuff with. I still have my three liter, water storage bottle. I love how it just collapses down into nothing. Like it's the best. And three liters, that's that's plenty. And then I take my camel pack as well. That's three liters as well. So in summer, six liters of water. That's literally for me to drink. And this is for me to cook with and wash with or whatever. And I find that's been so fine. But I do also have a life straw just in case. I don't take this with me every time. If I know I'm sorted for water, I'm not gonna bring it with me. If I feel a bit iffy, if it's a really hot day or if I'm in the middle of nowhere, then I'll just pack it. Peace of mind, if I need water, I can get it from a from a water source, from a creek or whatever. And then I pack all this gear into a dry bag. Yeah, and that way I can just reach in my bag, grab this. I know that's got all my cooking stuff in there. I'll even chuck in some wet wipes so I can wipe my dishes, wipe my hands while I'm cooking or whatever. And it's, it's, it's all convenient, it's all in one bag. It's nice. Now thank you guys so much for commenting on my last video. I ended up getting some products that helped my moto camping adventures as well, like the, the metal table, the ferro rod, some other things in there as well. You guys gave me some tips and they work. They work really well. So if you do have any other tips, any other tech, I really enjoy trying new things, anything that you think might help me in my moto adventure travels and everything, let me know in the comments below. Love to hear your experiences. Hope you took something out of this. Stay tuned for the luggage system video and the in-depth tent review. It's gonna be, that'd be good. I think that'd be really good. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next vid. Bye.